when choosing to plant your plants, you're going to need to decide whether you want to direct seed or to transplant them. And with direct seeding, there are some advantages because it's cheapest and there's a lot of disadvantages because the weeds will grow quickly. You're going to have to do thinning and other and you also face potential of cold soil temperatures. So in general, it's highly recommended that where possible, you use transplants. The things that really need to be direct seeded include potatoes, peas, carrots, beets, radishes, arugula, mustard greens, and really that's about it. With almost every other crop, it's highly recommended that you use transplants when you put them out into the garden because with transplants, you'll, you can see the plants, it's easy to get in and weed around them. It also provides you with some additional flexibility because that's three or four weeks where you're growing something outside of your soil. It allows you maybe to put an additional crop in each year. And then transplants, especially if you do it right without damaging the root system, uh, the plants will take really quickly and continue growing. The idea with transplanting is you want to try to minimize transplant shock along the way uh, when you do the transplanting. And then with the actual seeding, you'll want to start by choosing some sort of seeding mix. And especially if that material has been sitting around for a while and if it's very dry, you need to pre-moisten it. So if you don't do that, especially peat-based materials are hydrophobic. The water is not going to absorb, it's just going to roll off, and there's not going to be that good spongy effect in terms of having enough water for your seeds to be able to imbibe that to take it in to initiate the germination process. With different kinds of flats, they're, they're used for different kinds of seeding. So for example, with a lettuce mix, with a salad mix, which includes a lot of brassica, uh, broccoli family crops, and with cilantro, I like to grow those in flats where we'll plant them and we'll plant uh, the, it in thirds. So we'll have a third dedicated to each of these different kinds of plants and then they're going to grow. And then we can use a pair of scissors to cut it and harvest it. So this is the container. This is the place where we're growing the plants. And in many ways, these wooden flats that you can make out of cedar or redwood or other materials like that are exceptionally great places to grow your salad greens and other things where you don't want to have to do the weeding, but you want to be able to get repeated harvests. This process is called cut and come again. And again, cilantro, arugula, mustard greens, those are all good crops to do with come and, uh, cut and come again seeding. And with this method, typically you can basically overseed. So you're applying a lot of seed to a small area tamping that in a little bit. And then these seeds are going to need to be buried just a little bit. And here's my third. So this part right here is going to be cilantro. And typically with cut and come again greens, especially the ones that are sown in the spring and the fall, you can get two or three good cuttings out of them. Now with the potting soil that you choose for direct seeding and growing containers like this, if you're using a regular potting soil, you're going to want to read the ingredients and probably add some additional fertilizer to it as well. With this seeding mix, it already has a decent amount of fertility added to it. So I'll probably be able to just grow and not need to add any additional fertilizer. Though if I need, I could use some um, water soluble fertilizer like fish emulsion to make sure that I get at least a couple cuttings out of these. Also, these flats, as an aside, are really nice for direct, uh, for seeding leeks and onions and other things that would later be transplanted out in the garden. There's enough soil here that they can get a really good, nice rooting depth, and then you can prick those things out and drop them into the soil out in the garden. With various kinds of cells, like the little four pack here, or with the larger 36 cell spacing, with these guys, you'll also want to fill them with a seeding mix. And the idea is to fill them loosely with the mix. And then if you basically just drop it, that's going to compress the potting soil down into the trays a little bit. You don't want to go press it really firm because there's not going to be enough loft, enough fluff in there for the plants to do great. With these larger cells, I like to grow a lot of different kind of crops here. Tomatoes, this would be a great place to start tomatoes. Also, broccoli is a good kind of plant to start in these cells. And with these, the seeding depth on my packet here says a quarter inch. 
So with that, I will get a handful of seeds and this is a hybrid broccoli that will create a nice head. And in each cell, I'll poke little holes so that I get about a quarter inch down. I'll drop one or two seeds in each of these holes. And then that way I'm ensuring that if one of the, the seeds doesn't germinate, I'll at least get one of them. And then at some point, uh, when the plants are about this tall, I'll be able to come in here, remove one of the plants with a pair of scissors and get just one solid transplant to be able to take out of this cell and to transplant out into the garden. With the larger 36s, anything that has a bit of a larger seed would also do really well here. So for example, lemon cucumbers would be a plant that I could put into a larger cell spacing really nicely. And in this case, I would probably only choose to put one seed because these guys are relatively expensive. So I would put a hole in the middle, drop one seed in, maybe do two, and in that way, I'm making best use of my scarce resource of these seeds, which are relatively expensive. And typically with these or with these larger cells, after they germinate, it's gonna be about three and a half weeks until you put them into the garden. And really what you're looking for is just when the roots start to fill in this space is when they need to be transplanted, either stepped up into a larger pot or transplanted out into the garden. If you wait too long and the roots start to twirl around, it becomes a little bit root bound. And because vegetables grow so quickly, if you miss a week or two of growing time, you, it'll end up you'll getting less yield in the end. So you have to be really careful to pay attention to how long these are here, to basically look underneath. And ideally with flats like this, you have them growing up on slats. So the holes that are on the bottom of this are not on a solid surface like the wood here but there's air underneath. And the, one of the beauties of this kind of flat here is that there, there's air pruning that occurs on the roots underneath so that the air keeps the roots from growing down into the, the wood that might be below it. Now with this smaller cell spacing, this is great for smaller seeded crops. With lettuce, if we want a head of lettuce, we would plant one or two seeds per cell and then trim that down to one plant that we would put out into the garden later. So that's for a nice big, like um, foot wide head of lettuce. For cutting greens, you just broadcast seed it like over here. It's a totally different way of growing lettuce. Both work great. It just depends on what you're looking for in terms of the final product. So for the smaller seeded cells, we'll put one or two seeds per cell. And these will typically fill in about three weeks. So there's less soil volume and the plants will fill in quickly. They'll be smaller, but they'll have a great, nice little um, pyramidal shaped root system. And when you put them out into the garden, generally, particularly with this brand of tray, which is called Speedling, there's a minimal transplant shock because of the shape creates a root system that really just takes readily to the next step when they're put into the soil. I also, a lot of people direct seed corn, but it's also possible to transplant corn. And for this, you'd put one, uh, one seed per cell. And with these guys, you would drop them in. And because it's a bigger seed, you're going to want to go a little bit deeper. And the seed packet here is going to tell us that we want to put them at a depth of one to two inches. Probably for these trays, one inch would be about right. So I'm going to pop these guys in individually. It's a bit of a meditative process. It's kind of fun once you get into the rhythm of seeding. And then since I've pressed it down a little bit, I can come in and fill the top with a little extra soil scraping along the side and that way I have my right depth and I have the, the correct volume of soil filling up the flat as well. Once we've done our seeding and we've pre-moistened the soil so it already has some water holding capacity, then we can come with a watering can and water away of these different crops. And you can see that the water is puddling a little bit from this can and that's typically gonna happen with a seeding mix. They tend to be a little bit hydrophobic initially. Then for over here with these flats, I can really direct the water just right there where the seeds are, 
let it get in there nicely. And then I'm going to want to pay a lot of attention to these as they're growing and basically use my finger, stick it in here. And if it's feeling like the surface might dry out just a little bit, but if it's a little bit moist underneath, it's probably fine. It definitely is possible to add too much water to these, especially if, if it's a peat based product, it acts like a sponge and then it's going to retain the water and you might have damping off fungus or other sorts of problems or the just too saturated and the roots won't grow very well. One thing you do want to keep in mind with all of your flats and materials is start with a sterile medium. If you use any kind of soil in the mix or compost that you've made, you don't know whether it's stale or not and you might end up with fungal problems like damping off fungus. Any purchased product like this is going to be sterile initially. Also with these flats, if, particularly if you've had damping off fungus in the past, you might want to sterilize them and you can put them in a big garbage can in a bleach solution, dunk them in, keep them in for about 20 minutes or so, pull them out and rinse them off. So if you're starting with a sterile medium and you have sterile flats and you're cleaning your hands before you get in there, hopefully you won't have any major problems with diseases along the way. Then when you have your flats, I guess before that, you're going to want to make sure you have either a nice greenhouse or a very sunny location and a south facing window where you can put these things. You'll want to pay attention, make sure that they're getting enough light. Uh, it's not, seedlings don't like to be really leggy when they don't get enough light. They grow tall and spindly. You want short, squat, robust transplants that are going to look something like this so that when you put it into the ground, it's going to be a really strong, robust kind of plant. And then from the roots here, I can see this is perfect timing for transplanting because the roots are just starting to fill this four inch pot right here for this kale. If you don't have a south facing window, one thing that you can do is put it under lights and we'll go check that out. But regardless, especially early in the spring, something you're going to probably want to invest in is a heat mat. And this is an electric coil. You put it under your flat and you plug it in and that's going to heat up the soil. Ideally seeds want to have about 70 degree temperature in order to germinate and it, the, the seeds will germinate faster if you heat them up from underneath. Once the seeds germinate, they don't really need the extra heat and then you can go ahead and move the flat off and have another flat on for that time period. So in that way, your, your limiting factor in terms of how many seeds you start is going to be the size of your seed mat. This is a very small one. You can buy one that fits four flats or even more than that as well from somewhere like Johnny's or Peaceful Valley Farm Supply. If you don't have a nice sunny window or a greenhouse, then you're going to want to invest in some grow lights. Just typical shop lights work. You don't need special bulbs for vegetative growth. And notice that I have the heat mat in here as well. And the lights cover the width of the flat here nicely. So it's a good even light. And also it's just a couple inches up above the plant. So once the plants start growing, I can raise these lights up so that we can adjust the height according to the plants. But you really want to keep it nice and low so that the plants are getting plenty of light. And the other thing is for vegetative growth, you'll want to set it at a 12 hour light cycle and you can do that just with a handy electrical timer that you would use for a lamp or something like that. It's also really important to label your plants. So the bare minimum is the variety and the date and you put that in with the different sets of plants that you have in your flats and that way you can keep track of when you planted them and when you're going to need to transplant them. To summarize, the key points you'll want to keep in mind is starting with sterile flats and sterile media, choosing high quality seeds, and then timing it correctly so that when you start these things and then they're ready to go out into the garden, it'll be warm enough out in the garden in order to get them. So that's where row covers and other things can come into play because that allows you to uh, extend your season out in the garden. And by using your flats here, you're also able to extend your, your flexibility in terms of having more time when the beds out in the garden are not growing things and that gives you just a little bit more flexibility and um, better capacity to plan your vegetable garden to reap as much harvest as you can out of the season.